Oh, oh, it's about time we finally check out this thing. I've been eagerly waiting to show you this baby. Hey guys, Vimal here and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be super interesting guys because we'll be checking out my 6 lakh rupees PC that is powered by AMD's Threadripper Pro CPU. And let me tell you, this is the most powerful and most expensive PC that I've ever used till now. And this is something that you exclusively see on my channel only. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon on. Keeping that aside guys, if you guys actually remember a couple of months ago, maybe two or three months ago, Ago, actually made an unboxing video on this product but that time I just made an unboxing and showed you like a complete overview on it I didn't share my experience on the performance so I've been using this PC since then for almost like two or three months or maybe more than that only and today in this video I'll be sharing like my complete experience and feedback on the performance how does it handle gaming and thermals noise everything will be shared in this video so you guys will also get like complete information so make sure to watch it till the end and I've told you the price right it cost almost like 6 lakh rupees like who does even spend that much on a PC who is it even targeted for Kon kharita hai bhai? you'll almost get like a decent car for that price I'll tell you all the details in this video and is it actually worth it we'll talk about that also so let's get started with the video all right guys so first let me give you all a closer look and talk about the design and the build quality the P620 is mainly targeted for industry professionals and serious content creators who do not want any sort of hiccups while working. Also, there is no RGB lighting here cause pros like to keep it simple and minimalistic right and that too without any distractions. It's got a clean and modern design that obviously states that this is a server PC. The entire body is made of metal, all steel construction and has a ThinkStation branding on the front side. If you ask about the dimensions, the PC is around 17.5 inches tall and weighs about 15 kgs. Quite compact and has a slim profile, occupies very less space in your setup. If you guys remember, I've already given you a complete walk around during my unboxing time only, but anyways, I'll still give you a quick brief. There's a handle on the front side so you can easily carry the PC anywhere and going down, you've got the front panel I.O. which includes a power button, a 3.5 mm audio jack, two USB 3.0 Gen 2 ports and two more USB Type-C ports as well. And yes, the ThinkStation also comes equipped with a DVD drive on it just in case you need it. So that was about the front part. There is nothing on the sides except the Lenovo branding and at the back side is where you've got all the rare motherboard ports, four display ports on the GPU for the connectivity and the power supply on the bottom side. So that's it, that was our complete overview on the exteriors. Now let me just open up the side panel and show you what's inside. Now what I really like about the PC is, it offers a complete modular toolless design. That means you don't need any sort of tools to open up or even replace the parts inside, which is super convenient and easy. Just check out this PSU for example. It's like a modular design guys, you just need to lift this lever like this and the PSU detaches and you can easily take it out and replace it in future. Very easy right? And by the way, as mentioned earlier, this PC is available in multiple configurations. So let me tell you about the specs of my model. So my PC is powered by AMD's Threadripper Pro 3975WX, which is a 32 core 64 thread CPU. And let me tell you, this is a monster. It's based on a 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture and is no joke guys. You'll experience next level performance on this PC. We'll just come there in a moment. The MOBO that they're using is a custom ATX model which has a WRX80 chipset made specially for this CPU and has 8 DIMM slots, 2 M.2 PCI slots and a lot of other stuff. Talking about the RAM, the system supports a max of up to 1 TB RAM but my variant has 16 into 8 which is 128 gigs of DDR4 ECC RAM clocked at 3200 MHz and there's a 512 GB PCI Gen 3 SSD on board. Not to worry, you can easily expand the storage as per your requirement. And coming to the graphic card, the P620 features a Quadro RTX 5000 GPU. Now this is a workstation level GPU that is specially made for professional kind of work like animation, rendering, graphic designing and stuff like that. Offers 16 GB GDDR6 memory for excellent performance. And lastly coming to the power supply, they're using a 1000 watt 80 plus platinum rated power supply with 92% efficiency. Wait a second, I forgot to talk about the cooling part. The Threadripper Pro has a TDP of around 280 watts and initially I was a bit skeptical here because the brand has used an air cooling solution for it. 
They went with a twin tower dual fan edition air cooler and during my usage in the past few months, I faced no sort of critical temperatures or any heating issues. So those were the specs of my PC. Now let's talk about the performance. Starting off with some benchmarks. On Geekbench 5, it got a single core score of 1258 and an insanely high multi-core score of around 20148. That is madness guys, the highest multi-core score I've seen till now. See, the P620 is powered by a Threadripper Pro 3975WX and is no joke, it's one heck of a beast CPU and can handle any sort of task you throw at it. No matter how heavy the workload is, PC runs buttery smooth, like muska. Me personally, being a content creator, I was really impressed with the performance. I do a lot of photo editing and video editing with a bit of graphic designing as well and had a pleasant experience using it. I could easily edit all my 4K 60fps 200mbps video files, add multiple layers of graphical text and effects on top of them and still scroll through my timeline smoothly. It is offering great performance and the export times are also very quick. Even during rendering tests, this PC was outperforming my Ryzen 9 custom built PC having a 30 series GPU on board. I guess one of the reasons for that is the P620 comes with a workstation level Quadro RTX 5000 GPU, right? And Premiere usually performs better on CUDA platform than on OpenCL. One interesting fact I'd like to mention is, even though we had 128 GB of RAM available, the system never utilized more than 30 GB even while running heavy workloads on it. Coming to the noise and thermals, it's not the quietest PC I've used and yes, it definitely gets a bit loud, especially under heavy load and can be distracting if the PC is very close to you, especially on your table. Talking about the thermals, the dual tower air cooler was doing a decent job, but I have to say there was very limited ventilation and air circulation inside the cabinet and because of this, the temperatures were rising. On an average, under heavy loads, the CPU is hitting around like 75 to 78 degrees centigrade. So I'd really advise Lenovo to work on the airflow and ventilation inside the cabinet. You guys should definitely add like more vents to the top and side profiles to help with this situation. Lastly, coming to gaming. It's not dedicatedly made for gaming, but come on, that doesn't mean you can't game on it, right? On paper, the P620 has some killer specs and yes, you can easily do 1080p triplet title gaming at ultra high graphics and get buttery smooth frame rates. You'll easily get around like 100 to 150 FPS depending on the game that you're playing. But the best part again here is the Quadro RTX 5000 also supports ray tracing as well. In fact, I actually made a dedicated gaming review video on this PC. I'll just leave a link to that in the card above. You'll have to check out that video. Well, that's it guys. We're almost coming to an end. So let me tell you about the pricing. The base variant in this P620 series starts at 2.7 lakh rupees and my high-end variant costs around 6 lakh rupees in the Indian market, which is like quite expensive for an average user. See, these sort of server PCs are not made for individuals or home purpose. They're mostly made for professional work in large organizations, industries, filmmaking or research purpose who have a big budget to spend. But to be honest, I felt if you have like basic knowledge on how to build a PC, then building a PC yourself could offer you almost similar kind of performance at a much lower price tag. Don't you guys agree with me on this? Let me know your thoughts also. Like, would you build a PC your own if you had this much budget? Or would you choose a pre-built PC like this? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video and got to learn a lot. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos. And I'll see you all in my next one.